थर्टी थ्री ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल प्रेजेंस विद एमेनोरिया पैल्पिटेशन हीट इन टॉलरेंस ऑन असेसमेंट अ डिफ्यूजली इन लार्ज मास वॉज फाउंड इन द सेंट्रल पार्ट ऑफ द नेक द मास मूव विद डिग्लूटेशन बायोकेमिकल असेसमेंट ऑफ द थाइरॉइड फंक्शन द थाइरॉइड फंक्शन आर फाउंड टू बी टी फोर इट इज ट्वेंटी माइक्रोग्राम्स टी एस एच पॉइंट टू टू माइक्रोग्राम सो दिस इज अ केस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ हाइपर थाइरॉइडिज्म हाइपर थाइरॉइडिज्म एंड दिस इज ड्यू टू ग्रेव्स एक्चुअली दिस लाइन हैज नॉट बीन एडेड ऑल एक्सेप्ट आर ट्रू सो ऑल एक्सेप्ट आर ट्रू फॉर दिस केस ना वेन वी टॉक अबाउट ऑल एक्सेप्ट आर ट्रू सो दिस इज अ केस दिस इज अ केस ऑफ हाइपर थाइरॉइडिज्म एंड लेट एस सी लेट एस सी लेट एस सी दिस थिंग how do we see hyperthyroidism what are the classical features and then we will see the options associated with this so when we talk about the current scenario the features the patient presents to you the presentation is amenorrhea the presentation is along with that palpitations the patient presents to you with heat intolerance these are classical features and along with that weight loss which is not mentioned here they are classical features suggestive of what the hyperthyroidism and then if you see the biochemical profile biochemical profile of this patient you will understand that there is increase in t4 and there is fall in tss so now you are dealing with a case of hyperthyroidism Now, what are the causes of hyperthyroidism? Let us see. When we talk about hyperthyroidism, there are two important categories. One where the gland itself is producing excess hormones, so that is the case where there is increased radioactive iodine uptake. So why you say that increased radioactive iodine uptake? Because if actually the gland is functionally active, it will accept more and more radioactive iodine. and then there is a category where there is decreased radioactive iodine uptake now how is it possible that the gland is having excess production and gland is not accepting so here the case is not hyperthyroidism due to excess production now this is a category where maybe because of thyroid stimulation or an injury to the thyroid all the stored thyroxin or you can say t3 t4 has been suddenly thrown into the blood and thus there is a surge in the levels and that is why if you give them radioactive iodine they are not metabolically active so they will not accept so these patients are the patients of chronic chronic thyroiditis chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis or you must have heard of subacute thyroiditis that is de quervains so chronic or subacute thyroiditis apart from this it may be due to factitious thyrotoxicosis what is factitious thyrotoxicosis the classical example of factitious thyrotoxicosis is someone advised to take 40 international units and you took 14 tablets or you took 40 tablets so you altered the facts that is why it is factitious it may be due to allergen induced and that is what is hamburger's thyrotoxicosis so hamburgers hamburgers thyro toxicosis now when we talk about increased radioactive iodine uptake the patients with increased radioactive iodine uptake we have graves disease we have graves disease and this is also diffuse toxic goiter diffuse toxic goiter then we have plumers disease plumers disease that is toxic mng then we have solitary toxic nodule solitary toxic nodule then we have dishormogenesis dishormogenesis then we may have it during a condition which is known as dermoid yeah? teratomas so stroma ovary stroma ovary or you may have it because of some tumors which is even though rare but it is let us see the options graves if you talk about graves 
it's an autoimmune origin yes it's an autoimmune condition in majority of the cases in more than 80 percent of the cases it is autoimmune toxic adenoma is associated with gsp mutation do you know solitary toxic nodule or toxic adenoma when we talk about solitary thyroid nodule which is toxic the problem is that this nodule is auto functioning and the reason is that there is something which is known as G stimulatory protein mutation. Now what is this G stimulatory protein going to do? There is gain of function, there is gain of function of G coupled protein, G coupled protein on adenoma and that is why there is uncontrolled increase in size. When we talk about Surgery is preferred over radioactive iodine ablation in toxic MNG. This is a very interesting topic. Now, do you know that in Graves disease, the entire gland is at fault, but in toxic adenoma, there is a nodule and in toxic multinodular goiter, there are multiple nodules. So, if I want to ablate them, the dose of radioactive iodine, the dose of radioactive iodine required will be very high so it's a high dose and do you know at this high dose this normal thyroid parenchyma is also exposed because this is also metabolically active reason so normal thyroid parenchyma this is destroyed or you can say this is inflamed and this is known as there is a collateral damage induced which is known as the radiation induced thyroiditis so thus, since there is an increased risk of radiation induced thyroiditis, we refrain from the radioactive iodine as a first line option in case of toxic MNG. So this is what. So point C, point B and point A, they are all correct. Surgery is the preferred management for apathetic thyrotoxicosis. Now apathetic thyrotoxicosis is seen in elderly with subtle features with subtle features with cardiac anomalies uh, with you can say cardiac abnormalities so all the frank features of hyperthyroidism are not there they are the patients where cardiac abnormalities are the only whole full presentation along with that they may be having non-specific features like depression myalgia weakness and then if you see the biochemical parameters, you get to see a maybe subclinical hyperthyroidism. Now, this is a patient where radioactive iodine is preferred because of their age and the medical comorbidity. Surgery is intolerable for them. So, there is a case which is reported as apathetic thyrotoxicosis, where in elderly is the overt features of hyperthyroidism like uh, heat intolerance, tremors, everything is missing. We have non-specific features along with that we have cardiac instability in these patients. So these patients are never a candidate for what? surgery. So option D is absolutely wrong. Option D is wrong. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.